While using NativeScript, have you ever thought, I wish it had this feature or I wish it did this thing? Well, it's an open source framework, so maybe you've thought about how you would contribute to NativeScript, but then you wondered, does it take a rocket science degree in order to be able to do that? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to fork the repository, get it on your computer and play around with the source code. I'll even show you how to modify a bit of source code and see the changes live sync to a device. That's coming right up. All right, welcome back. My name is Alex Ziskind. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to contribute to NativeScript. This is the first part of a series of videos where we're going to dive into details on how to contribute to different aspects and the different applications that you have in the repository. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started and I'll show you where to change code. Let's dive right in. Okay, so here is github.com slash native script. It's an open source project. The repository that we're going to look at is the main native script repository. Make sure you're logged in, you have an account, you're going to click on fork. That's just the way GitHub works. Before you clone a repo, you need to fork it. So I'm going to click on my account here. And this is going to make a copy of this native script repository in my own account. So now you can see that the URL is actually github.com slash alexiskin1 slash native script. This is where your own name would be up here. All right, now the next step would be to clone. So I'm going to click on this code button here and I'm going to clone the repository. I'm going to pop open a terminal and make sure you have git installed. I'm going to type in git clone and then paste in that URL. That took about one and a half seconds to clone. I'm going to go to the native script folder and open that up in my editor. I happen to be using Visual Studio Code. So this is the native script repository. This is a mono repo. To get started with this, there's going to be one command you need to issue. So I'm going to pop open the terminal right here in VS Code by pressing control back tick. You can also go back to the terminal and do the same thing. I'm going to just work right here in VS Code. Let's give it some more space so we have a lot more space to work with. And I'm going to type in npm run setup. This is going to run through and install the workspace dependencies. It's also going to execute some unit tests just to get everything ready for development. And when it's finished, the next step is you're going to run npm start. Now this is brand new. This will display an interactive menu. And this is what makes native script development so much fun and easy now. Let me just give a little bit more space so we can see the menu here and you'll be able to navigate using your arrow keys. These are the different options you can run inside the workspace that allow you to work on different things or test different parts of the framework. You can run automated tests for iOS, for Android. The test runner will execute integration tests on iOS and Android. Then you have toolbox. So these three commands, toolbox clean, toolbox iOS, and toolbox Android. These are used for live syncing changes to core modules. And it's also good for debugging issues and just testing things out. Next, we have the UI test targets. So we have UI.clean.iOS and .android. I'm going to stop saying clean because it's obvious that we can just use that to clean each one of these instances. iOS and Android for the UI suite will display a ton of different UI components that you can test and that you can try against the iOS and Android runtimes. After that, we have our at native script namespace. We have the build task, which will actually build native script core for deployment to NPM. You can run a set of unit tests against core here. There's UI mobile base which is the base level for UI core itself. You can also run a Webpack build and you can run unit tests against Webpack. All right, so that's the native script side. And then you have this focus section, which is really cool because now we're dealing with the mono repo. So when you open this up in Visual Studio Code, for example, like we have here, there's a lot to look at, but you might not need to look at everything while you're developing. For example, in the apps folder, you have automated, you have your toolbox, you have your UI, and then you have your actual core packages here, UI mobile base, and then Webpack. You might not need to see everything. I'm gonna give you a concrete example here. Let's say you were looking for builder. So I'm gonna type builder here, and this will show me all the files where builder shows up. That might be a little too much to look at because, well, we're trying to find one specific builder on the package where we're trying to work. This packages folder contains all the core modules for native script. I'm going to come back to a demo momentarily here and show you an example of live syncing any kind of changes that you make here 
while you're developing. We'll come back to that. Then we have types for iOS, we have types for Android, and we have something called UI Mobile Base. This is where the source code for the underlying native widgets lives. So here we have iOS widgets, and then we have the Android ones as well. You don't need to modify that very often, but you can if you want to. It lives right there in UI Mobile Base. Now the Webpack source is pretty interesting too. This includes all the templates that I used across all the apps, and all the Webpack transient dependencies are managed here as well. The apps folder has the automated tests. Those are the ones I mentioned right over here. And then we have the toolbox. That's these three right here used for experimentation. And then you have your UI sample app target here, which is these three right here. Now let's get back to that builder example I was talking about. So when we search for builder up here, you get a lot of different options that you might not even care about. And that's what this focus is all about down here. So if I go down here and select focus core, for example, and press enter there, now the Visual Studio integration will actually filter out anything that's not related to core. If we take a look at packages here, you'll see that only core is available. Whereas before you had a bunch of other packages here, now only core is visible. So this will allow you to focus in, and when you actually do a file search for Builder in Visual Studio Code, you get a lot less options here. Visual Studio Code is actually trimming down the results here because, well, we don't wanna see them right now. WebStorm and PHPStorm support is likely coming as well pretty soon. Now, when we selected that option, we actually get printed out what command was executed on the command line to get us that focus mode. I can use that command again I'm gonna copy that here and paste it. And I can actually filter it down even more. Let's say I wanted to narrow the scope of the search and what's displayed in the editor folders. And I wanted to narrow this down to a certain app scope. So I'm gonna select apps here and type in toolbox. Now, if I take a look at packages, we only have core here, just like before, but we also have only one app showing and that's the toolbox. We don't have the other apps showing like we did before. And when I do my search for builder, you see that I don't even have a scroll bar here anymore. So my results from the search are even narrower, which is gonna help me navigate my code a lot easier. Now you can always reset that. We can run npm start again, and we can reset our focus by typing in focus reset. So you don't need to always use the up and down arrows for navigation. You can actually just start typing what you want, the command that you want, and the command palette will be narrowed down as well. So we can select focus reset from this menu and this will reset the focus. And now all our packages are back here. All our apps are back. By the way, you see that it's a little more difficult using VS Code for npm start tasks. So you could do that right here on the regular terminal. Let's say npm start, and this is gonna be a lot easier. So I can type focus and then get to what I need right here. Now the fun part. Let's take a look at an example of what we can actually do. I'm actually gonna go back to the terminal and show you how to run an app from here. So I'm gonna run UI apps.ui.ios. Let's run that one. Now, right now, I don't have a real device plugged into my computer, but I do have the iOS simulator, so I'm gonna bring that up right here. So this is a sample app that actually shows you all these UI widgets that you can play around with, and there are some pretty good examples here, like animation, bottom navigation, and then button, CSS. You can download it and play around with it. There's a lot to look at. But let's say I wanted to do a global change on one of these UI widgets. Let's take a look at button, for example. I'm gonna go back to the code and I'm gonna leave this running because we have live syncing going on in the background. I'm gonna open up packages, core. I can go search for a button and yeah, that might be easy to find for me because I know exactly where it is. But I can also go up here, press F1 in VS Code and search for button. Here are all the different button related files. And let's say that in iOS, I wanted to change the color of the button text. Well, how would I do that? Let's find the button area right here. Here is the button common, and this is the code that's shared between iOS and Android. Then we have specific code for Android. Let me just close this up to give us more space. And you'll see Java related code here. It's actually TypeScript, but we're calling Java APIs. And we have iOS specific code here. If I do a search in the code for color, 
nothing is shown there. So if I take a look at button, I'm going to see that button actually inherits from button base. So I'm going to navigate to button base and there's nothing color related here either. So I'm going to go up one more level in the hierarchy of my UI controls. I'm going to go to text base and let's go to index.ios.ts and I'm going to search for color here. And indeed, I do have some color here. And it looks like this is where I have my getter for my native color and I have my setter for native color. And this is where I'm setting the color. So first I'm determining what the value here, if it's gonna be a native script color instance or a native iOS color instance, and then I'm passing that to set color. Instead of doing this, what I'm gonna do is actually say this dot set color, and I'm gonna use the iOS native APIs to get a constant of a color that I'm gonna select here. So UI color dot, let's say red color, that's a constant. And I'm gonna actually bring this up so I can do it side by side and show you what happens here. Here's my simulator. I'm gonna save this file and you'll see that in the background we have a rebuild process happen and a live sync. And you can see that now all our buttons actually have red text. And not only that, because we've made this change in text space, all our text is gonna have red text as well. Now, once you're done making your changes or fixing a bug or doing something else or adding a feature, all you have to do is just create a commit to your fork of the repository and then create a pull request from that to the main NativeScript repository and you're done. So this is how easy it is to work with NativeScript code and to contribute to the NativeScript repositories. What's on your wish list for NativeScript? Let me know down in the comments below and also subscribe to this channel for more NativeScript tips, tricks, and tutorials, including this series on contributing, which is gonna continue and I'm gonna do a few more videos on that as well. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.